The planet Mars is alive with geophysical activity. The term geophysics literally means the study of planet Earth's physical processes. For planetary scientists, the idea of such processes occurring on Mars was once highly improbable, if not unthinkable. Mars has no coherent global magnetic field. It has a very tenuous atmosphere, only about one half of 1% as dense as Earth's, and it is said to have no tectonic plates. And yet for nearly half a century, scientists have puzzled over the surprisingly dynamic activity on Mars, including its towering dust devils, its planet engulfing dust storms, its mysterious aurora, and perhaps most surprising of all, the recent discovery of at least hundreds of seismic events which remain unexplained. A new scientific paper published in the Geophysical Research Letters analyzes the largest Martian quake detected to date. The quake registered a relatively astonishing magnitude of 4.7. Astonishing because, as described by seismologist John Clinton, the energy released by this single Mars quake is equivalent to the cumulative energy from all the other Mars quakes we've seen so far. The best guess planetary scientists have offered at this point is that the quakes may be connected to hidden volcanic activity inside or deep below the Martian crust. However, seemingly lost in the discussions of the Mars quakes is the challenge they clearly pose to long-held assumptions in Earth seismology. It has long been considered a settled fact that tectonic plate movements cause earthquakes. And yet Mars has no tectonic plates, demonstrating that the mechanism is not required for seismic activity. As those who have followed the Thunderbolts project have long been aware, for decades, a number of scientists have proposed that the Earth-Sun connection plays a major role in triggering earthquakes. Some of the evidence that seems to support this view includes the apparent correlation between sunspot activity and earthquakes. Along these lines, it's been proposed that changes in the geosphere result from a temporary intensification in Earth's magnetic field. This might begin to explain a host of strange phenomena that have been observed for many centuries preceding large earthquakes, including mysterious low-frequency electromagnetic emissions rapid, unexplained changes in the ionosphere, major temperature anomalies seen in satellite images, the observation of so-called earthquake lights from ridges and mountain peaks, and unexplained animal behaviors, including migration several days before a destructive earthquake. As early as 2003, Dr. Friedman T. Freund addressed these anomalies in the scientific paper, Rocks that crackle and sparkle and glow. Strange pre-earthquake phenomena. Dr. Freund proposes an explanation for earthquakes that would actually place the phenomenon in the realm of semiconductor physics. In the paper, Freund states that rock acts like what is known as a P-type semiconducting material when placed under stress. Deep within the Earth, quote, positive holes are liberated and flow to the Earth's surface, collecting there without being reabsorbed which is the proposed mechanism behind earthquake lights. In the 2013 paper, Nature of Pre-Earthquake Phenomena and Their Effects on Living Organisms, Dr. Freund offers this simple summary of his hypothesis, which could explain some of the anomalous earthquake-related animal behaviors. Earthquakes are invariably preceded by a period when stresses increase deep in the Earth. Animals appear to be able to sense impending seismic events. During buildup of stress, electronic charge carriers are activated deep below, called positive holes. Positive holes have unusual properties. They can travel fast and far into and through the surrounding rocks. As they flow, they generate ultra-low frequency electromagnetic waves. When they arrive at the Earth's surface, they can ionize the air. When they flow into water, they oxidize it to hydrogen peroxides. All these physical and chemical processes can have noticeable effects on animals. In the electric universe, the electrical nature of the sun itself provides the missing link between sunspots and earthquakes. The sun is connected to the larger electrical circuitry of the galaxy, and the same electric discharges to the sun that cause sunspots can affect our planet's ionosphere. As physicist Wal Thornhill explains in his 2005 article, Electric Earthquakes, 
The ionosphere forms one plate of a capacitor, while the Earth forms the other. Changes of voltage in one plate will induce movement of charge on the other. But unlike a capacitor, the Earth also has charge distributed in rock beneath the surface. And if the subsurface rock has become semiconducting because of stress, there is an opportunity for sudden electrical breakdown to occur through that rock. Thornhill has proposed that underground processes occur similar to those found in atmospheric lightning. The small-scale traveling of charge results in precursor electromagnetic effects, perhaps similar to the so-called stepped leaders between cloud and ground with lightning. However, larger earthquakes may involve a vast electric circuit from below, through the atmosphere, to the ionosphere. In other words, Thornhill argues that the Earth stores internal electrical energy, which can trigger subterranean lightning, which may cause deep earthquakes. In this view, massive disturbances of the ionosphere accompanying major earthquakes are expected. The Martian environment is, of course, very different from Earth's. On our planet, Birkeland currents entering the poles spark aurorae and modify Earth's magnetic field. However, as stated earlier, Mars has no coherent global magnetic field. When solar storms strike Mars, the result is sometimes a global aurora. As we've discussed previously on this channel, in recent years, scientists have observed other dramatic atmospheric and, quote, geologic events, which have coincided with impacts from solar proton storms at Mars. For a number of years, astronomers have puzzled over dramatic dust plumes, sometimes seen erupting at up to hundreds of kilometers into Mars's upper atmosphere. As we reported in 2016, Scientists studying Hubble Space Telescope images of Mars found an apparent correlation between one such plume and the likely arrival of a CME at Mars. However, no mechanism exists in standard planetary science to account for the dramatic phenomenon. As described in a new scientist report on the discovery, one possibility is that plasma could be interacting with ice grains or dust lower down in the atmosphere and electrically charging them, boosting them higher but it's not clear how the effect would be big enough. Likewise, the planet's towering electrified dust devils and tremendous global dust storms remain mysterious in mainstream planetary science. However, the electric universe has always stated that the Martian ionosphere is electrically charged, even though Mars has no thunderstorms. This viewpoint was outlined in a 2005 teapot when dust storms engulf Mars. On Mars, Electrical effects will reach directly from the ionosphere to surface without the ameliorating leakage via storm clouds that we see on Earth. Unlike radiant energy from the Sun, electrical energy can accumulate in the planetary capacitor for some time, with the potential for planet-altering events when the atmosphere finally breaks down and massive discharge activity is initiated. On Mars, as on Earth, could an electrical circuitry from beneath the ground to the atmosphere, to the ionosphere, be driving seismic activity. Of course, the Martian environment is still alien to scientists on Earth. So from any vantage point, surprising revelations are to be expected. However, the discovery of seismic activity on a world which is acknowledged to have no tectonic plates is not a surprise to proponents of the electric universe but it might serve as a call to planetary scientists to begin exploring theoretical alternatives such as those offered by the electric universe.